professors are using D2L now, so you may not have the copy with comments that you can easily print, but remind them of a project you did. I always ask students this. If, um, students from my honors class, I, I have them remind me what their IDH project was, or um, you know, we talk about that so I can put that in the letter. We can do that if we're given enough time and are happy to do it. So you want to kind of arm your letter writer with all this information because it will just make their letter for you stronger, which obviously makes your application stronger. Do you have any questions on this? Uh, I'm going to get a letter of recommendation from um, my chem professor. I had it like two or three semesters ago. Would that letter be weak because she may not remember me? I can only have the one semester. It shouldn't be if you help remind her what your grade was in the class and if you can think of a standout project or a comment or anything she gave you to kind of jot her room a bit. And if she's still on the campus, you would want to go in. It always helps to connect the face to a campus. But no, I've written students, letters for students and um, <coughs> I had them probably three years ago. <laughs> so, and it wasn't really good. What if it's like a professor that you take a class with constantly every semester. Like, is that a bad thing? Or like, would it be looked at as if, like, I don't know, like maybe, I don't know. I, mean, I can't I see why that would be bad. I had a student who, um, is in class in your major? You keep taking uh, the same My person? minor is sociology, and um, I already, like, so two classes with Dr. Bernhardt, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to take all of his classes until I graduate. So obviously, he's going to be like one that I'm going to request because he knows me really well by now. And yeah. I still have like a couple of classes to go. And he would be the perfect person to write you And I know, I know, I'm going to do What if it's a professor that retired? You could still so contact them. If um, you have their yeah, personal have, like, so I, I would definitely give them a bit more time than the professors who are still on the campus, uh, but have a backup just in case, because many of our retired faculty move out of the state or yeah, in California right now. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, it might take some lead time, and I can't, we can't guarantee that they'll do it the way that. But I mean, it's just their credentials. For their credentials give us, you know, they're a professor. Absolutely. Yep. And they'll still put their title on it. They're, they'll know what they're doing. I'll make sure. So definitely give your faculty members plenty of time. Um, the first two points here we'll skip to we already have deadlines again. <laughs> if your deadline is uh, say December 1st, you want to give yourself even a week between when you get the letter from your professor and that deadline. So always be mindful of that. I did have a student once ask me to write her letter. Uh, this was a, an afternoon at 4.30 p.m. The letter was due at 5. <laughs> she asked me if I was leaving campus. In that situation, I needed to have to say no because there was no way I could get that done in a half hour. So uh, again, try to avoid that situation by being on top of your plans. The final point here is just of this part, and we'll show you more. Um, is to thank the professor, um, whether you just send them a quick email. The habit I got into, because I'm old school, and my mother would be mad at me if I didn't. I keep blank thank you notes in my desk, so I'm always ready to thank somebody. <laughs> so go to you know the dollar store Target, grab you know some thank you notes, and just have them at the ready. Um, it's a nice <coughs> gesture. If you do that, the professors will be likely to write another letter again if you need one. And um, you know I can say that from experience. And obviously, when you transfer, or get a scholarship, or anything like that, follow up and let them know. Um, I stayed in touch with a student who. Uh, Graduated from BC, went on to FAU, and is now in graduate school at Wayne State University of Michigan, um, studying with my advisor. So, you know, she's kept me up to date with that whole process. So it's it's very nice to know. And the Honors Institute wants to know where you go, so we can add your school to our brand sheet up there. And thank you for adding that. Don't forget FAFSA, and definitely follow up with us, the Honors Institute. Make sure everything is on file. Questions. You want to talk about a little bit of money, right? So, this list just goes through things as far as the your scholarship. Similar to anything when you're applying for your transfer applications, you want to be sure that that school has your major. When you're looking at transfer scholarship applications, be sure you meet the requirements for that application. If you're not eligible, 
you're going to waste your time. Make sure your application is thorough and complete, that you've included all of the necessary procedures. It certainly goes without saying you need and consistent in your application. Uh, you may want to rely on somebody you know well to proofread some of your applications for you. Uh, you on Central Campus, you know Dr. Senior, right, in English? <coughs> He's going to be having, uh, you can talk to Professor King and look on the Central e well page <coughs> for more information. But he's going to be having a scholarship essay session soon to help you, you know, tighten up those essays and things like that. <coughs> to see uh, so some of this he'll cover. But you definitely want to be uh, neat, consistent, personal, and concrete. So, and the rest, obviously, don't lie, to be honest. <laughs> be very specific. You want to highlight the best things about you that are required for that scholarship. The objective and logical, the being objective <coughs> part, one thing that I tend to see with writing is a lot of students talking about their feelings. Um, and that's a good thing, obviously, in your writing. But for this <coughs> avenue, depending upon the scholarship essay or whatever you're writing for your applications, you want to be objective, you want to be logical, and you want to keep it to um, that perspective and back it up the way you would be you know, writing a critical essay. This time the essay is just about you, so you want to highlight that. Proofread, proofread, proofread. I always put that on my writing assignments and teaching. It's the same thing here. You want to make your application as polished as possible. Rely on a writing center. They will, um, in this campus, they're on the second floor. They will help you with this as well. They're not a proofreading service specifically. If you go to them and say, I want to drop off my paper, I'll pick it up in an hour, will you proofread it? They're not going to do that. <laughs> but if you go to them and say, you know, does this essay make sense? Uh, does it have a thesis? Even a scholarship application has thesis. So you want to use that resource. They'll help you kind of that way. Be engaged and a deadline. <laughs> but this this is probably um, the more information I'm looking for. Our guests are arriving. We'll talk to you soon after we break for a few minutes. But the transfer scholarships, as I said before, come from transfer institutions. So our representatives from FIU, FAU, and NSU will speak to you in our second hour about the specific scholarships BC students can apply for at their institution. These are some other national scholarships that uh, we know about through the honors community and that some BC graduates have received. Many of these uh, you can Google. Uh, these are links here. We're not going to look at all of them. But the Udall scholarship is for students in environmental science type majors and looking at Native American policy and healthcare. The Barry Goldwater Scholarship, which we had a Goldwater Scholar for Broward last year, is for careers in math, natural science, or engineering. The Gus White Scholarship is no specific major, so that's a variety. Same with the Spanish, Hispanic Scholarship one. PTK All USA Community College Academic Team Scholarship is also one that suits what any major you can look into. The Dream.us Scholarship, and we have information on all of these on our table to my left and right is a newer one that you'll want to check out. Uh, this is something we literally just learned about. So you want to look for the one that scholarships for community college graduates. And uh, this will help you, if you qualify for their terms, uh, get your bachelor's degree at one of their four-year partner colleges. So you want to look at their partner colleges as well. That's what I mean by some of these being rather specific. In the interest of time, <laughs> I won't click on all of these and go over them with you, you'll want to research that in your own. The Jack Kent Cook Foundation Undergraduate Scholarship is a uh, national scholarship, one of the most prestigious ones. If you were looking at our Honors Institute facts before we started, uh, Broward College is tied for most of the nation with 13 scholarships won by our students for the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship. This is the big one. This will cover, um, depending on where you want to transfer, it could cover everything for the next two years. Uh, so you want to look at the undergraduate transfer scholarship, and it's $40,000 per year, so that's what I would call this one. <laughs> but um, the JKC application process is involved, um, and their procedures have changed again this year a little bit from last year. So here's your minimum application eligibility requirements, and uh, it will say here GPA of 3.5 or better out of a 4.0 scale. Generally, this scholarship is awarded to students with 3.75 or above. That's how competitive it is. Um, 
I haven't heard yet that a student lower than 3.75 enrollments, um, just to give you a sense of how competitive this is. Um, we can nominate, actually a few of our students are nominated each year for procedures similar to the past years, um, but it is to go national in that sense. So that's why many of the students who apply have to lose. So that's just giving you the lay of the land. But it is possible. We've you know, obviously had a lot of students win from our institution. You'll want to be sure you look at the JKC website, and there's some information at the table. Watch the video, go through the procedures, and the deadline for it um, will be coming up. We have it on your honors calendar in November, but I actually go by that deadline, because that's earlier than what they're now advertising when they put the calendar together. So think of the earlier deadline. You want to start getting everything ready for this one by early November. And look, they have Twitter chats and a webinar, so if you want to sit in on those to learn how to apply for this. Questions so far? Other local scholarships, local institutions that are listed here often offer scholarships, so you want to, again, do your own searches to try to find those. Local alumni clubs, if you are looking at U of M, FSU, U of F, and they have a a local Fort Lauderdale Alumni Club, they might offer scholarships. So this really does take some research and some investigating to dig and find some of these. Other websites and other things, I'm sure Anna will talk about the link program a little bit. Okay, so I'll show you their website. But uh, one thing, if you were at our Welcome Back picnic on Friday, Suzette Spencer showed you, or showed the students who attended, this a library guide right in our university college library. Uh, this is linked here for you. Uh, if you, you can find it um, a few different ways. But what they put together is you know some kind of kind of clearinghouse sites for scholarships. And they've also listed some reference works that you can check out or look at here in the room. And if you forget how to find this. UCL site, ucl.brower.edu, and then search research guides, or click on research guides, hit scholar, type scholarships in here, and that will get you the library guide. So, if you didn't see that, I'll tell you afterwards, just ask me. But they've also put that together. So our library's done a great job in collecting resources right there for you, so you can check books and <coughs> leave the web for a minute. Two books that I recommend to all students transferring, uh, is one is Susan Weir's Transitions, a guide for the transfer student. I used to own a copy of this, but a student borrowed it last year and never gave it back to me. So I hope that it served me well. <laughs> so I was going to bring it today and show you, but I don't have it. Uh, the other one is, this book is not really about transfer applications, but it's uh, goes towards entering the academic conversation. It's a great resource that Dr. Nightingale found a few years ago on how to write essays. So it you know, was a great resource for all of your college here. This I still have a few copies of, so just stop by my office and I can let you borrow it. And talk to fellow alumni. We're going to work with the alumni network um, in Daniel Sylvester's office to try to organize an event to connect you to recent alumni. Uh, but until we can do that formally for you, talk to each other, talk to the honor students you met while you were here. Final slide for this part of our presentation is from last year's convocation. So education is definitely a journey. Yours began here with us. So, and in the words of our former director, uh, in memory of Dr. Arm Garbacchino, reach for the stars. That's what she always said. Do we have any questions right now? I have a comment. Okay. I would assume by now that you all know how to do your degree audits and to click on um, at the degree audit, each school that you might want to transfer to in Florida is listed there. And all you have to do is click you know, on the school that you're interested in and a box will drop down. You put in your major. Well, your major's already in there. Should be in your degree audit. If your degree audit is not updated, then you're not gonna get the right information. So make sure your degree audit's um, up to date click the drop down box for the school and all the required classes that that university in Florida wants you to have, public university usually, um, are listed there so that you know immediately what classes you need to be completing here in order to be eligible to apply for transfer to that university. 
if you don't have those courses or they're not in progress or planned, that university is not going to accept you because for that major. So make sure if you don't know how to do your degree audit, go see your advisor in, um, in advising to show you how to do that. What we'll do now is take maybe a five minute break and then I'll transfer.